Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here from WantCulture.com. And you know what, there are very, very few video game franchises that are truly too big to fail in any grand sense. I mean, you've got Mario, Pokemon and Grand Theft Auto, despite the terrible trilogy release recently, they're really not going to take that much of a hit, but others... Well, they're not above taking catastrophic damage if their new releases aren't up to snuff. Now, no video game franchise is perfect. Most of them have at least one dud entry among the lot, but sometimes a series suffers enough critical and commercial indignities that its future begins to be cast in doubt. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 huge video game franchises that are doomed to fail. Number 10. Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is one of the most commercially successful video game IPs in history, but let's be honest, the series has been on the skids for years now. Well, it was, at least until the release of 2017 Sonic Mania, which after about 15 years of mostly mediocre Sonic titles was a major breath of fresh air, a nostalgia-tinged love letters to the franchise's better days that in turn received the series' best reviews in 25 years. With Sonic Mania's critical and commercial success and the presumably instant green lighting of a sequel then, it seemed like Sonic was back on firm footing. But after years of speculation about Sonic Mania 2, a rumour recently did the rounds that the sequel was scrapped after Sega failed to make an agreement with the first game's developers, who were largely members of the Sonic fan game and hacking community. Since 2017, things have been basically business as usual for Sonic, with the various spin-off titles scoring wildly mixed reviews from critics and suggesting Sonic Mania was less a new direction for the series and more of a flash in the pan success. While it's unlikely that Sonic will ever do something bad enough to lose all of its faithful hardcore fans, the mainstream goodwill rustled up by Sonic Mania has basically evaporated once again, and there's little sign of it being regained anytime soon. Number 9. Watch Dogs the Watch Dogs series is a strange beast, isn't it? Though the original 2014 release received mixed reviews from critics, it was a strong commercial success, leading to a sequel being released just two years later. Ironically, despite being a much better game with a more colourful, less serious style, Watch Dogs 2 sold 80% less than the original game on its launch week though by last year had still impressively sold 10 million copies. After the second game's iffy launch, though, Ubisoft decided to change things up again for last year's Watch Dogs Legion, which despite its intriguing multi-protagonist setup, released to mild reviews and just 54% of Watch Dogs 2's physical launch sales. Now, it's important to factor in the uptick in digital purchases since 2016, and also the fact that some may have chosen to play the game on Ubisoft Plus instead, but with the lukewarm response from the players and press alike, it really feels that the IP is massively losing ground. Ubisoft will clearly be fine with the glut of AAA franchises at their disposal, but given Legion's soft commercial performance out of the gate and lack of major sales figures released since, the series is probably letting out a death rattle right now. Number 8. Need for Speed There's absolutely no denying the iconic status of the Need for Speed franchise. It's been around for close to 30 years and sold 100 million copies in that time. But the series has also struggled to find a satisfying way to innovate over the last decade or so, with the likes of 2015's reboot, 2017's Need for Speed Payback, and 2019's Need for Speed Heat struggling to strike much of a chord with players. The problem, inevitably, is that Need for Speed has basically had its lunch eaten by the Forza Horizon franchise, which, while exclusive to PC and Xbox, has been going from strength to strength in recent years. In much the same way that the Medal of Honor franchise began to feel passé and failed to carve out a new niche for itself, Need for Speed feels like a relic of the past that just can't keep up with the vastly superior racing titles that have gobbled up its slice of the market share lately. EA will inevitably keep trying to make attempts to restart the franchise because they just can't bear letting a brand name go to waste, but honestly, maybe it's okay if Need for Speed just gets put out to pasture. Number 7. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Ubisoft is so, so desperately trying to make Fetch happen with the Tom Clancy Ghost Recon franchise, which, while storming back to life with 2017's Ghost Recon Wildlands, has struggled to make players care since. 2019's Ghost Recon Breakpoint received wildly mixed reviews for its dull open-world mission design and gameplay, which led to sales which the Ubisoft CEO deemed disappointing. Ubisoft then announced the next entry into the series, a free-to-play live-service battle royale game, Ghost Recon 
front line. Fan reaction to the revealed trailer was overwhelmingly negative, citing the utter cynicism with which Ubisoft was clearly trying to cash in on current gaming trends without actually delivering a quality, worthwhile Ghost Recon game. In response to this, Ubisoft cancelled Frontline's planned alpha test and delayed the game indefinitely while they attempted to address players' concerns. But ultimately, it's clear that Ubisoft is just chasing the gravy train here and trying to compensate for Breakpoint's failure by milking Battle Royale and live service frameworks for every drop they're worth. This is the sort of cynical business mindset that made fan bases dry up in the first place. As while nobody will be paying to play Frontline, that doesn't mean it'll convince fans to fork out for the inevitable microtransactions. Number 6. WWE 2K Depending on who you ask, the WWE 2K franchise is very much a failure already, though until recently still performed well enough commercially to make an annual release worthwhile. The WWE 2K series has been wildly criticized by fans for years for the insulting overabundance of bugs, shockingly dated graphics, and general lack of compelling updates to the formula. For around a decade, the series' reception has ranged from decent to terrible, though the release of WWE 2K20 back in 2019 was for many the that broke the camel's back. Inexplicably even buggier and even more low effort than usual, seemingly due to the departure of regular developers Ukes, WWE 2K20 received a brutal backlash from fans and critics alike. The game's disappointing sales suggest that even ultra-loyal WWE fans weren't biting on this one, which in conjunction with the pandemic led to the planned WWE 2K21 being cancelled. Instead, 2K rushed out WWE 2K Battlegrounds as a stopgap title, but it was basically a glorified mobile game and received mixed reviews to that end. WWE 2K22 is currently set to release this March, and though 2K has promised that it will offer a more refined experience, you would be incredibly naive to believe that. While it's possible that 2K22 is a return to decency for the series, given the company's track record, it is far more likely to be another mediocre at best effort that's really not worth your time or your money. Number 5. Metal Gear As far as many Metal Gear fans are concerned, the series basically ended when Hideo Kojima acrimoniously departed from Konami following the release of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Since then, Konami has attempted to push on without him by releasing the widely panned commercial failure that was Metal Gear Survive. And it's here that players sent a clear message that they're just not interested in lazy cash-in spin-offs. While many franchises could survive without the original creator, Metal Gear fans are uncommonly loyal to the creator, whose unique and authorial style is near impossible to replicate. Given that Kojima is surely never coming back to Konami, it's clear that Metal Gear's dubious future lies in the long-rumored remake of the original Metal Gear Solid, and a possible sixth game produced without Kojima's involvement. Now, The remake could work fine enough because it will be working off Kojima's existing blueprint, but nostalgia can only be exploited through remakes for so long, while a sans Kojima Metal Gear Solid 6 will definitely be met with massive skepticism and even hostility from fans. Number 4. Shenmue The story of the Shenmue or Shenmue franchise if you want to be boring about it is surely a fascinating one. The original 1999 Dreamcast game was a massive critical hit but failed to translate all of that praise into strong sales, in large part because of its monstrous $70 million budget. However, Shenmue Ni Tooney was developed in conjunction with the first game, meaning that it was ultimately released despite the original's commercial underperformance. Again, it was lauded by critics but sold poorly at retail, causing a planned third game to enter development hell. Only in 2015, almost 15 years after the sequel's release, was it confirmed that a third game was in the works, aided by funding from Kickstarter backers Sony and publisher Deep Silver. After numerous delays, the third title was finally released in 2019 to massively polarizing reviews views, some praising its faithfulness to the original style, while others knocking it for failing to revise the dated gameplay mechanics. And to the surprise of nobody paying attention, it also failed to sell well outside of its core fanbase. While it's easy to suggest that a fourth game will come to life with the same crowdfunding efforts, given that the third game left even hardcore fans disappointed, it's unlikely that the next sequel will muster the same enthusiasm. If anyone can get a fourth game made, it's probably franchise creator Yu Suzuki, the man who has willed a trilogy into existence so far, but given that the third game fell so short of expectations for many, this may well be all she wrote for the series. Number 3. Marvel's Avengers 
The Marvel brand as a whole is so dominant across pop culture right now that it truly does feel too big to fail. Square Enix took quite the embarrassing stumble out of the gate with last year's Avengers game from Crystal Dynamics. While on the surface it seemed that it wasn't possible for a AAA live service Avengers game to flop, underwhelming pre-release footage combined with lukewarm reviews ensured that sales quickly fell off a cliff after a strong start. The underwhelming launch caused Square Enix to lose an estimated $63 million during the release window. And just recently, company president Yosuke Matsuda confirmed that the game was indeed a commercial disappointment. Considering that Marvel's Avengers was supposed to be a Destiny-level commercial titan that would keep Square Enix well-minted for years, with a sequel presumably releasing a few years on, it's looking like those plans are basically up in smoke. Though Square Enix's recently released Guardians of the Galaxy game set in the same universe received much warmer reviews, its low concurrent player count on Steam during release week suggests that sales will be relatively low, likely affected by Marvel Avengers tainting the overall brand. While it's likely that Square Enix would roll the dice on another Avengers game eventually, it seems that the cash cow has been mortally wounded rather than just being milked. Number 2. Far Cry Franchise fatigue is a very real thing. Sometimes an IP just fails to provide enough stylistic, gameplay, and narrative innovation to keep players engaged, such that the critics and commercial reception begins a downward slide. There's perhaps no greater example of a blockbuster IP just belting out the played out hits than Far Cry, which offers the most formulaic gameplay loop of any Ubisoft franchise, and that is really saying something. Despite attempts in recent years to re-energize the stagnating brand with spin-offs like Far Cry Primal and Far Cry New Dawn, the just-released Far Cry 6 received the mainline series' worst reviews to date, with many citing its frustrating willingness to recycle the same stale formula. Far Cry 6 also released to underwhelming sales, posting 50% less digital sales than Far Cry 5 did in the UK. And while it's still sure to turn a profit for Ubisoft, seems to signify that players are finally growing tired of the series' refusal to offer substantial innovations. And number 1. eFootball The Pro Evolution Soccer franchise is one of the most lucrative video game IPs and say it with me kids, OF ALL TIME! Though the release of 2019's game saw the franchise rebranded as eFootball PES. The recent follow-up, however, removed the PES branding entirely, which wouldn't be a bad thing were it not that eFootball 2022's release was an abject disaster. The free-to-play football game was universally panned for its wonky, glitchy graphics and atrocious gameplay, such that it became the worst-rated game on Steam just after a day of launch, with a shocking 92% negative review. Given that the game was monetized through its in-game premium content, it's unlikely that the few frustrated fans ended up giving Konami any money at all, and so it's difficult to picture eFootball 2022 ever turning a profit. While it's entirely possible that the game could be whipped into shape with updates, Konami might just be better off focusing their energies on a relaunch with next year's title, because the damage is done here. It'd be a sad fate for a series that had been championed in the past for boasting superior gameplay to its more popular rival FIFA but unfortunately, sometimes that's just how it goes. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 huge video game franchises that are doomed to fail. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, my friend, with love and respect, because you deserve all of the best things in life. Sometimes we can look out in the future and think that we too are doomed to fail, but I promise you, with the support of friends, friends, family, and professionals in the support industry, you will be able to climb those hills, you will be able to go over those mountains and into a brighter and better future for yourself. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.